So it's my pleasure to introduce the speaker today. Uh, Olivier Wittenberg will speak on the cycle class uh, map for zero cycles for local fields. Thank you very much. So thank you for the introduction and for the invitation to speak in this seminar. So um, everything I'm going to say today is joint work with the Ah, I'm sorry. Okay, I'm sorry. So everything I'm going to say is joint work with the uh, NNNO. So the goal will be to explain some new results we obtained uh, about char groups of zero cycles for surfaces over local fields and strictly local fields. So uh, local fields is the usual sense of the word. It's strictly local means, uh, for example, the maximal and ramified extension of a PID field. Um, and this, so especially these will be results about surfaces with positive geometric genus. Uh, and this will be the point, as I will explain. But uh, let me start by setting up some notation for the the whole of the talk. So capital X will be a smooth projective variety over field K, capital K. And as usual, uh, I will denote the child group of zero cycles by CH0 of X. So recall this is the group of so, uh, cycles, so free group on the closed points modular rational equivalence. So rational equivalence is generated by linear equivalence on the curves lying on X. On the, um, because X is projective, there is a degree map. And I will denote the kernel by A naught of X. So um, recall, uh, so in dimension one, this is nothing but the Picard group. Ah, yes, uh, the shift, François. Oh, yeah. oh, ah, okay, <laughs> thank you. This is just the Picard group, and uh, if, uh, if there is a rational point, then the, the degree zero part is nothing but a set of rational points of the Jacobian variety. So this group in dimension 1 is very well understood. Now in dimension greater than 1... You mean geometrically connected x. Yes, 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 okay. Geometrically really small. For the whole of the talk. So, um, yeah, in dimension greater than 1, this is one of the simplest invariants that one can associate to x. Um, but uh, it's, uh, in, in many cases, it's very difficult to determine the structure of this group or to compute it in any given example uh, if x has dimension greater than 1. And this even over an algebraically closed field. So to illustrate this, let me recall uh, the situation of <coughs> surfaces over the complex numbers. Uh, well, we have a conjecture, box conjecture. So in dimension one here, you see that this group uh, is the group of points of an abelian variety. So it's represented by an abelian variety. And in dimension greater than, than one, say uh, dimension two, uh, it's conjectured that uh, uh, this group, A naught of x, should be representable in a suitable sense by the points of some variety, if and only if h2 of x of x is 0. So um, what is known is that uh, 
if you have a, so this is the geometry genus, and what is known is that if you have a surface with non-zero geometry genus, then this group is huge. It's not representable in, in any sense. Um, and this conjecture in the other direction is, is out of reach. Okay. However, there is one simple thing that one can say uh, over over the complex numbers and more generally over algebraically closed fields in any dimension is the fact that this root is uh, divisible. In the case of curves, it's clear from the above description. And in general, you can reduce to the case of curves by finding curves like on x going through to specified points. OK, so uh, this is the situation of the complex numbers. There is one situation in which uh, this group is well understood. It's uh, when the, the field is a finite field. Ah, so. so when k is a finite field at q, then everything is understood because of a higher dimensional class field theory. So let me recall the relevant theorem which is due to Kato and uh, Shuji Saito in 1983. So in this case, uh, the Chow group of zero cycles of degree zero is always finite. But it's more precise than this. One can, uh, in fact, compute it in examples. It's very controlled. So namely, there is a um, map, a natural map going from the Chow group of zero cycles to the uh, abelianized fundamental group defined by Frobenius substitutions. You send the close point to the, cor to the class of the corresponding Frobenius. And uh, Kato and Saito prove that this map is injective. So to detect rational equivalence, you just need to compute the image in this group. And the it's, and it's, it, I mean, the image of this injection is, is very well understood. It was determined by Lang. So this gives complete control over this, this group. And for example, if the, if the variety is simply connected, from this you can deduce that the Chow group of zero cycles of degree zero is trivial. So the image are just the elements whose degree is integer. Yes, exactly. OK. OK. So um, but it's really the only situation where one has a complete hold on this, on this group. So from now on, I will consider local and strictly local fields. So capital K will be the quotient field of R. R will be a Hanselian discrete valuation ring. The residue field is K, small k. For simplicity, I will assume that capital K has characteristic zero, but it's really not an important assumption. And uh, we'll let D denote the characteristic of small k, which may be zero. And so I will consider the two cases when small k is finite or separably closed. So capital K local is when small k is finite, and capital K strictly local, when small k is uh, separable from So in this situation, yeah, uh, I mean, examples, of course, are uh, periodic fields here, QP and finite extensions. And uh, here, for strictly local, there are two, two, two natural examples. The maximal and ramified extension of the chaotic field, but also uh, C double parenthesis T is an interesting uh, example. 
So in this situation, one has a, a, a good structure theorem for the child group of zero cycles of degree zero, which was proved by uh, Saito and Sato. By the way, when you consider the unramified extension, you can consider it either algebraically or complete, and I guess there is a general rigidity fact that it doesn't matter. For yes, 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 yes. Yeah, I, I only assume Hensilian yes. can apply everything to both, to both cases. So, um, okay, so the structural theorem by Saito and Sato in uh, 2010. Um, so here the field has uh, infinite transcendence degree, so uh, you cannot uh, avoid uh, uh, a big divisible subgroup just as in the complex case. But the, the theorem tells you that apart from this, uh, there's just a finite group, at least prime to p. So precisely, um, you can write a lot of x as d plus f, where uh, f is, is finite of all the prime to p, and d is is a group which is divisible uh, prime to p. So this means uh, d mod n d equals zero for n prime to p. So if p is zero, you don't say prime to p. Right. So if, if p is zero, it's divisible plus finite. Yes. Because prime to zero is not. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I agree. <laughs> okay. So. <laughs> Um, right, so uh, as I mentioned, so D uh, is a, a bit analogous to, to the group over the, the complex numbers. Uh, as you've seen, it, it's extremely hard to understand. So here it's probably even harder. So, I mean, there's little, really little known about it. It's only known that D can contain torsion, um, even for simply connected varieties. Uh, so this is uh, due to Asakura and Saito. Uh, but in this talk, we will focus on the finite finite group F, which is really analogous to the group over finite fields here. So, um, so in, in this sense, this theorem is analogous to the theorem of Cato and Saito, which says that over finite fields, the group is finite. Now, one would like to have an analog for the second part of the theorem, too, which allows you to compute it in examples uh, or I mean, to get a hold on, on its uh, structure. So, for this, so we want to study f. f is finite all the prime to p, so we fix a prime l different from p. And we look at the l primary torsion of f. And the general tool to study uh, uh, classes of uh, cycles is the cycle class map to etal homology. So when you consider the cycle class map, uh, Sign, which goes to CH0 of x, uh, to, so if D is the dimension of, of the variety, goes to H2D, and how x, the of D. So here, you, you Yes. François? Who is calling the salle? Who is calling the salle? It's someone from the exterior. It's not our fault. Okay, so I'm going to... He will stop too soon. I hope. Okay, so we can... Okay, so just for Beijing and Tokyo, someone is calling the room, so we don't know who is. We will continue. Okay. Okay, so we consider integral LRD cohomology. So this is a finitely generated ZR module. So because of this, any element which is infinitely divisible here must die in there. So this map kills uh, D. So only F survives. And uh, well, another way to phrase this is to consider this group tensor hat ZL. Where tensor hat means you consider the inverse limit of CH0 of X modulo L to the N. Okay. 
So this kills, again, this kills the divisible part. And really, the analogous question to, to the theorem over finite fields uh, is, well, is this map injective? So what's about the injectivity? In fact, over a finite field, if, if, you, if you consider this over a finite field, you really get exactly the map here for Binet's substitution. You can identify uh, this cohomology group uh, well, for a fixed L with the pro L part of pi 1 M. So really, it's a generalization. Um, OK, and if you can answer, any, I mean, when there is a positive answer, then you can hope to, to compute F um, by computing just its image in, in, in its own homology. So this, uh, this question has received a lot of attention uh, from the 70s to the 90s uh, after uh, initial work by uh, Bloch uh, who initiated a method for studying uh, cycles, torsion cycles uh, using K-theory and by combining this and the block August theory and the Mercury associate theor theorem, it was recognized that one could get a, a good hold of co-dimension two cycles on arbitrary varieties, uh, on, sorry, uh, on, on varieties of arbitrary dimension. So, uh, so there are many names here to, to mention. So, Kuliatelen, Sansuk, Sule, of course, the Kato and Saito, which I've already mentioned and also Sato and himself. So wrote a whole series of papers about this problem using K-theory for cycles of co-dimension 2, so for surfaces for zero cycles. And one, and quite generally, these methods produced very effective results for uh, rational surfaces and, and more generally for surfaces with geometric genus zero. So, uh, an example of, of a theorem obtained in this series, which I think it should be attributed, oh, I should mention, sorry, Raskin. So this theorem is, should be attributed to Pelletelen and Raskin, 1985. Um, so about this question, if, so in a strictly local case, capital K, strictly local, Maybe I did not uh, stress this enough. The theorem of Saito and Sato is for both cases, local and strictly local. So here, if k is strictly local and x is a surface with geometry genus 0, then there is a positive answer. <coughs> then, uh, sorry, is injected. So the goal of the talk would be to try to answer, uh, to, to give some answers to to this question for surfaces with non-zero positive, uh, sorry, with, with non-zero geometric genus. Um, so over local fields and over strictly local fields. Uh, so actually, the strongest results will be about local fields, but I also hope to show that the situation is perhaps unexpectedly uh, very different between local fields and, and strictly local fields. Okay, so um, maybe I, I start here. Uh, so the first theorem I want to mention is about strictly local fields. And actually over C double parentheses C. So if you want to, to, to consider surfaces with non-zero geometric genus, the first class of surfaces you look at is K3 surfaces. And in this respect, we can prove the following. So if X is a K3 surface, 
and we'll see the components of this T with semi-stable reduction. Then, okay, then and the answer is positive. Uh, so what does it mean? The cyclopass map is injective, but here, uh, a strict, so we're in the strictly local situation, so it's a field of cohomology called dimension one, and you can try to understand what this cohomology group is in this case. And because the, the surface is simply connected, it really means that there's no F. Uh, in other words, the job group of zero cycles of degree zero is divisible. Okay, so let me uh, let me explain the strategy for, for proof of this. So we will consider an, a, a model over the the ring R. So here R is C double bracket T, and I will consider a script X over R, a projective regular model. Uh, let me denote the special fiber by A. And its irreducible components by AI. So since we're in a semi-stable case, A here is reduced, and I will assume in addition that uh, it's a, it's a simple normal crossings divisor on, on X. So this is not needed or uh, in the result or I mean you can always choose a model like this. I mean, we work over C double parenthesis T. Yes. So, I mean, I'm explaining the strategy for the proof, so we choose such a model. Okay? No, but if you have a model without simple normal crossing. Yes. Then. Uh, ah, you mean if it's still semi stable in, the, in this weaker sense? Yes. Yes, okay, yeah. You're right. In, in, the theorem holds with semi stable in the weaker sense. Uh, that's what's written in the paper, but uh, I focus on this for simplicity. Okay, so, um, yeah. Okay, you're right. I mean, there's an ambiguity in, in semi stable. So, uh, in this situation, um, okay, let me use a new board. And you, you need that the total space is uh, regular, that it's not enough to have a log smooth uh, right. semi stable. Right. So in this situation, we consider the, the cycle of plasma psi. Um, so CH0 of x tensor hat ZL maps to H4 x ZL2. And we consider what happens on the model. So on the model, we have one cycle on the model. And the cycle class map to its cohomology of the model. Now vertically, you can write localization exact sequences. You can restrict to the generic fiber. And before that, you have one cycle on the special fiber. And here you have cohomology with supports in the special fiber. Here, 
there's a cycle class map again, which I will call psi 1a. So one cycle is on the special fiber. OK, and now the, the point is that uh, Saito and Sato did not only prove the finiteness theorem here. In fact, they, they proved something much stronger, which underlies this theorem. They proved that uh, the cycle class map for one cycles on the model is an isomorphism. Okay, so this is Saito uh, and Sato. And they proved this in, in the generality of their theorem, arbitrary dimension, local or strictly local field. But there they don't have regular model. Right? Yes. They, they have regular model. They assume they have one. Yeah. They assume they start with one, and then they claim, oh, you mean to prove this? OK, but to prove this, you can reduce to the, I mean, using okay, okay. your improvement okay. of the, the Young theorem. Yeah. OK, so now if you look at this, and there's one point here, which is uh, zero cycles extend to one cycles on the model. So this map is surjective. If you look at this, you see that you want to prove that the bottom map is injective. Of course, it would be enough for the top map to be surjective. But in fact, it's never the case for for, for the generations of K3 surfaces. One, one can check that this is never the case. The top map is never surjective. So one has to be more precise. But still, it's possible uh, by looking at this diagram and using this isomorphism to translate the injectivity of the bottom map purely in terms of the special fiber. So I'm just giving you the, the results. It's really reformulation using the isomorphism. So that's really step one. So from this, you deduce that <coughs> this group is divisible. If and only if a certain complex is exact. So this is a translation you can do in general, but for simplicity, let me use some uh, very simple uh, properties which come from the fact that I'm looking at the K3 surface to, to, to give you the translation. So here we find that a certain complex should be exact. So let me write it Q mod Z plus to Q mod Z to the power i. So, direct sum of i copies of Q mod Z. And then it goes to the direct sum of the level subgroups groups of the components tensor Q mod Z. So, if this complex is exact, that's the property. Okay, what are the maps? Here, it's just the diagonal map. And here, well, if the dimension was 1, it would be the intersection matrix. So in general, it sends, uh, if you take lambda on the jth component, it's sent to, um, uh, if you go to the i factor, you look at the class of ai intersection aj tensor lambda on the i factor or i different from g, j. If i equals j, you can anyway uh, modify by an element coming from the left to determine the image. So this describes the map. OK, so this is a concrete criterion, which you now have to check. So now that's the second part of the strategy. Is exact in the middle, you mean? Yes, exactly. Yeah, just this. So now you have transformed the problem into something which is purely on a special fiber. It's, it's completely concrete. Um, so then you have to use uh, the fact that special fibers of the generations of semi stable K3 surfaces have been classified. So there's a whole literature about this, starting from the work of Kulikov. Uh, person Pinker and uh, Miranda and Morrison in the 70s, the 80s. Morrison. So they, they classified uh, 
uh, semi-stable regenerations. of T3 surfaces. So here, one, one should, I mean, one would have to be precise. It, it means that uh, if you have a, a semi-stable K3 surface, they give you some nice model for which um, they can tell you what the special fiber is. And so there is a classification. And if you, if you use this, and if you know enough about uh, the surfaces AI which appear here, and which in this classification are uh, rational surfaces or ruled surfaces, except in the case of good reduction. Um, then, using these two things, you can translate the problem into a combinatorial one. So, uh, you, you obtain a, a combinatorial problem. So namely, uh, so it's about the combinatorics of the of the special fiber. Namely, the, the biggest case of the classification tells you that. Uh, uh, so in many cases, you have a K3 surface which degenerates to um, uh, to rational surfaces in in such a way that the dual complex triangulates the sphere. So then you 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 obtain questions about triangulations of the sphere, and in fact, the negatively curved triangulations of the sphere. These questions are, in fact, uh, hard in general. I mean, these objects are hard in general uh, from a combinatorial point of view. But it turns out that for this particular problem, you can, you can solve it. So that's the last part. So solve it. And I'm, I'm sweeping uh, lots of details under the rug. I should mention that these the generations are not uh, algebraic. It's only in the analytic category. You don't get uh, schemes. So you have to, to work a bit to, to, I mean, to glue the pieces together, but it can be done. No. What do you mean you don't get schemes? Do you get algebraic spaces or you get... So I think you get algebraic spaces, but it's not written in the literature. So they, they use uh, analytic manifolds. Your results that you mentioned, you always say projective. So yes. Do, do your res the results hold the proof used projective? For example, the, do the, the, the proof of Cato and Saito use projective? Yes, or I mean, not it's proper? Or? In many places, you use hydroplane sections. Uh, you use Bertini theorems and things like that. So. Ah, so, in other, so even in, in the last thing about the generation of K3, you really need projective. Uh, no, I mean, uh, you, you need uh, Bertini theorems to prove, sorry, to prove, for example, this isomorphism. But once you have it and you have translated the question in this form, then, I mean, you, you just look at this complex and you forget everything else. And now you can lose projectiveness. But the classification that they have yes. for analytic degeneration will apply in particular to the projective ones. Yes. So it but, but, they, but they give you, no, but what they say is if you start with a K3 surface, uh, then there is a model which is regular uh, and such that the, so the total space is regular and the canonical divisor on the total space is trivial. But this is not a projective scheme. This is only an analytic manifold. I mean, to get the condition that K is trivial on the total space. Ah. And, and this is what you need to, uh, to analyze the special fiber. And then you have to go from this to your model. Yes, so you have to use weak factorization and things like that. You, you use weak factorization to and, and check that the complex doesn't change and so on. And what about ramifying the original local field? Is it, does it change the problem or not? Sure, sure yeah, you, you lose, you lose the, the question. I mean, it's a question about uh, a finite group. I mean, okay. F, so mm -hmm. uh, you lose everything. Ah, okay. Okay, so that's about uh, uh, proof of theorem one. So a few comments. Um, so the first comment is that the, the first step of the strategy here is completely general. You, you, you can draw this diagram in any dimension, and you can always translate uh, the injectivity of psi in, 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 as the exactness as the as the exactness as the exactness sorry of the certain complex which looks like this. Except it's a bit more complicated in general. In, in particular, if 
x is not simply connected, then it's not true, or at least not clear at all, that it only depends on the special fiber. Um, okay, the second comment is that if we had the results of Kulikov, Person, Pinkham, Miranda, Morrison in mixed characteristic, then the whole proof would go through uh, over, say, uh, the maximal and ramified extension of QP, and you would get in the same way that uh, the, the group F is trivial, which means here that a naught of X is prime to P divisible. You but say that they work analytically, but then they must use not formal series, but convergent series, otherwise it doesn't make sure, sense. Sure, sure. So the first, in, in the, the first step is to reduce from C double parenthesis T to, to convergent okay. series. Yeah. And I'm assuming details on that. <laughs> so, okay, so again, if we had these classification results in mixed characteristic, we would, we would get prime to P divisibility over Q, P, and R. And the third comment is that uh, for K3 surfaces which are not semi-stable, uh, we don't know. I mean, it's an open question for us. We don't know what happens. The only reason why we need semi-stability is that uh, it's only for semi-stable K3s that there is a classification. Okay, so now I turn to local fields. Um. And in their model, you said that they have the total space regular, but is it uh, with reduced fiber or not? Yes, they always work with reduced fibers. But what do they have to assume to get it? Uh, some you said that there, it's not always the case that there is such, or they show that there is such, or no, they show that there is such, but it's not always a scheme. With reduced special. Yes. Yes. Ah. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. I mean, you, you start with the assumption that it's semi-stable as a scheme. You assume to start with that X is has semi-stable reduction as a scheme, and then they tell you you can find another model which is maybe not a scheme which is still semi-stable, and for which k is trivial. Ah, oh, OK. This is the, the, the point. Oh. Uh, Okay, so I turn to local fields. Um, so now K is a local field. Um, and so I will state a theorem. So this, so as you will see, this will be a much stronger theorem than, than this one. So I guess it's the main theorem of the talk. It's also about surfaces. And I will again work with the model, so this time I assume that I have one like this, so I, I keep the notation x, a regular projective model. Again, A is the special fiber. So I, I keep all of the notation, and I assume, so maybe there are multiplicities now, I'm not assuming some stability, but I assume that A red is a simple normal crossing divisor. Okay, so then theorem two. Um, so you have to make two assumptions. So the first assumption is about the AIs. So the AIs are smooth projective surfaces over a finite field, and I assume that they satisfy the Tate conjecture. And the second assumption has to do with the Albanese variety of X. So I assume that Alb X has potentially good reduction. This is the case, for example, if X is simply connected. Okay. And then, uh, so the theorem is that 
Again, science objective. So the cycle map to H4 ZL2 is objective for any, for any L different from P. So we get a positive answer in this situation. So again, this was known for surfaces with geometry genus zero. Uh, it's, uh, it was proved by uh, Shuji Saito in, in, uh, in the 90s. And the point, so the point is that, so it applies to surfaces with non-zero geometric genus. And as I mentioned, these are those for which, over the complex numbers, the Chow group is, is not representable. So a few remarks. The first remark about the Tate conjecture, here we assume it for the components of the spectral fiber, but it's very often the case that it's, it's satisfied for trivial reasons. So there are many, uh, for example, there are many uh, T3 surfaces, T3 surfaces, X, uh, for which you have a model and the special, and the special fiber is the union of rational surfaces or ruled surfaces, such that AI is birationally ruled for each I. And in this case, AI satisfies the Tate conjecture trivially. So there are, I mean, there are many examples where this can be applied. Second remark is that this the conclusion can be formulated in, a, in an equivalent way, uh, which also appears in the literature. So equivalently. Uh, so there is a natural pairing between the Chow group and the Brouwer group. You evaluate classes of the Brouwer group at points, and you take the local invariant of a classical theory, and so this goes to Q mod Z. And the conclusion is equivalent to saying that the left kernel here is divisible by L. can be seen as a higher dimensional generalization of uh, Lichtenbaum Tate duality. Lichtenbaum Tate duality says that for curves, this is a perfect pairing on both sides. And, and clearly, uh, the maximal divisible subgroup has to be in the kernel because the Brouwer root is torsion. Okay, and the third remark is about the other assumption um, about the Albanese. So in fact, if you remove it, then the theorem is wrong. So this, th there are counter examples uh, due to Parimalan's rush in the 90s. So uh, this, uh, theorem wrong without assumptions, without any assumption. on the albanism. So you have to put some, some assumptions. OK, so in principle, this should apply to all simply connected surfaces. of the proof are. Um, so ingredients of the proof. So you start in the same way as uh, as for theorem one. You you write uh, yeah you look at the diagram on, on the top. 
he writes the cycle class map for one cycles on the model and on the special fiber. And he uses the theorem of Saito and Sato that the map in the middle is uh, injective. It's an isomorphism, sorry. But then, here in this situation, we will actually prove that the map on the top is surjective. So here, so we'll prove surjectivity of psi 1a. So from stitch 1a counter hat and L to a homology with support. So really that's it's our homology. H4 A X Z2. So again by the theorem of Saito and Sato, this is enough. But it's an, uh, perhaps unexpectedly strong. I mean, in theorem one this was not true, but uh, okay here that's what that's what we prove. Okay, so we we start by um, reformulating this a bit as we did in theorem one. So the first thing is psi one a is subjective if and only if. So here again you dualize and uh, so you write the dual of this group by combining Poincaré duality and duality for the Galois homology of, of the ground field. So you find that the dual of this group is uh, H3. So let me write here. H3 of A, QL mod Z1. And then you consider the following map. First of all, you go to the direct sum over each component. And then you mod out by a certain subgroup. So the same group on the top. And I mod out by a certain subgroup which I denote CH1AI orthogonal. And I will define this group in a minute. But the condition is that the composition here is injective. This map here is injective. So this is a purely formal reformulation. And the group, I'm sorry if I mentioned what it is, it's just the group of those classes which die when you restrict them to curves. So the set of classes alpha in H3, AI, QL mod Z1 such that the restriction of alpha to any curve is zero. Okay, so then I will explain how the various uh, hypotheses uh, uh, play a role in how you if I prove this, I mean, I will just give a, a picture. Um, okay, the first thing is this. You have to, to use the, the hypothesis on the Albanese. So the Albanese is, is uh, related to H1 of X of the geometric generic fiber. And because X is a surface, it's related to H3, by duality. OK, now, if you use this, uh, you can try to relate this H3 of the generate geometric fiber to what happens on the special fiber uh, using uh, uh, the results of Rappaport and Zinc to prove the uh, monodromy weight conjecture for surfaces in mixed characteristic. So here, okay, you have to argue, I'm not doing it, but these two ingredients will allow you to conclude that H3 of A bar, so bar means you go to an algebraic closure, and the QL is pure of weight 3.
you look at the weights of the action of Frobenius on this, and because A bar is proper, but maybe not smooth, a priori it's, it's, it's the weights 3 and possibly lower. But in fact, uh, using this hypothesis, you, you find that it's pure of weight 3. And because it's pure of weight 3, uh, it has to inject into the direction of the same groups of the components. This is because you can write what the kernel is, and you find that the kernel is pure of weight. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, maybe not pure, but it's. I mean, there's no weight three in the, in the kernel. Okay, so that's one point. Then, the second point. is to use the Tate conjecture in not in an essential way, but uh, okay, it's a fact that the Tate conjecture implies that uh, the action of Frobenius on the H2 of AI bar is semi-simple for the eigenvalue 1. So, I mean, sorry. Yeah, it's partially, so let me say, it's partially semi-simple. So it's, this is a classical fact. And if you use this semi-simplicity plus some weight arguments, from, from this, uh, you can deduce You can deduce that uh, H1 of the finite field with values in H2 of A bar QL of 1 injects into the direction of the same groups over the components. So it means uh, just for the eigenvalue 1. It's semi-simple for the eigenvalue 1. Ah, this is part of that conjecture. Yeah, I mean, it's a consequence of it. Ah, okay, okay, in terms of numeric. Uh, okay, now putting these two things together, uh, you, you deduce that uh, H3 of A by the ocean self spectral sequence, H3 of A, Q1 1 injects into the direct sum of the same groups over the components. And now there's a bit of a miracle that you can deduce from this the same thing with torsion coefficients uh, H3 of A, Q1 of Z1 inject into the same, same thing. And the proof here is, is very simple. I mean, there's nothing deep. Um, but it uses crucially the fact that uh, we're looking at surfaces. And it's the only place where it's really crucial. You have to use some Lyovitzary spectral sequence, and you want some groups to be torsion-free and well, it works in dimension 2 and not in a higher dimension. OK, so you're almost done. You've proved that the first map here is injective. But the second map is, is no problem at all. That's where you, we use the Tate conjecture. So in fact, the Tate conjecture here uh, implies that these groups, CH1 of AI orthogonal, are 0. Okay, so that's how the proof looks. Um, so a few comments. First of all, it applies, so as I mentioned, to K3 surfaces, even in the non-semistable case, and also in the semistable case, as you, as you see, there is no need for the, any classification results. It's, in a sense, it's much easier. There's no combinatorics involved. 
But you assume that it is strict normal crossing by before you did not assume. You're right, you're right. But I mean, conjecturally, but I did, I did not assume that the multiplicities were one. Okay, um, okay so, um, so that's, that's one point. And um, in particular, so this, uh, so you see, if we had the classification in mixed characteristic, we would get the injectivity for K3 surfaces over the maximal and ramified extension of the field. Now, this theorem gives it for free, assuming the conjecture and an existence of models for K3 surfaces over, uh, over chaotic fields. But it's a bit strange that if you want to prove the same results of the maximal and ramified extension, then apparently you need, uh, you need very strong geometric results. OK, and I want to finish by coming back to strictly local fields. Oh, can, can I ask a question? Yes. Please. Yeah. So you, 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 you don't assume that a uh, closed fiber is reduced. But you, you said you, you use uh, weight spectral sequence. What, what, that, what does this mean? So, I mean, so the point is, uh, is to use the uh, local uh, invariant cycle theorem, which tells you that hi of a, uh, say, a bar 12 surjects onto uh, uh, hi of x bar 12 invariants under the inertia group. But to prove this, uh, you can reduce uh, by using uh, the Gabriel de Young alterations, you can reduce to, uh, to the semi stable case. Okay? Yeah, thank you. Um, okay, so I want to, to come back to strictly local fields. Okay, so we have a positive answer for uh, periodic fields, at least for simply connected surfaces. We have a positive answer for, for periodic fields, assuming the conjecture. And for strictly local fields, we have a positive answer uh, for surfaces with geometric genus zero. And then also for K3 surfaces. So what happens in general? Well, so we were quite surprised to find a counterexample in general. So this theorem three. Uh, and this works over both types of strictly local fields. So there exists X, the simply connected uh, smooth projective surface. Over C double parenthesis T. Such that, so again, what is the cycle map here? We're in the strictly local case, so the the cohomology group H2D uh, only contains information about the degree and the pi 1, the billion pi 1, but because it's simply connected, there's really nothing else than the degree. So here, the counterexample is an example where the group is not divisible. And here, we have A0 of X mod 2 is Z mod 2. So psi is not injective. And also, so that's one point. Another point is the same uh, over the maximal unramified extension. Unramified extension of a periodic field for infinitely many primes p. So, uh, so in particular, this shows that the hope for an analog of the Cato Saito theorem, which was about finite fields, you could hope for an analog over this field, which is quasi finite. Uh, well, the, this hope does not hold. I mean, the abelian fundamental group does not control the finite quotient of a knot of x by its maximal divisible subgroup. And, um, and another thing which I, I think, well, for me it was really unexpected, is that, I mean, you also get examples over strictly local fields like this. Now, if you take such an example, well, it's a surface, it's defined over some <coughs> chaotic field. 
So if you take this example, you can apply it to its theorem too. So what you get in the end is a surface or a periodic field for which the cycle map is injective. And the same, and in this example, the take conjecture is satisfied. So that's OK. Mm -hmm. And the same over any finite extension of the periodic field. You can, or at least any finite unramified, because then you, you see that the take conjecture is still satisfied. You can still apply theorem 2. But when you go to the limit, you get a counterexample. So I think that that was a, a strange phenomenon. Um, okay, so um, there are many many things that we don't understand. I mean, for chaotic fields, there is a rather complete result, except when the albinism variety is, is, is non-trivial or does not have potentially good reduction, then we don't have a good answer, a good understanding of what happens. Also, for strictly local fields, we don't have, it would be good to have a better understanding of what goes on, what to expect. And also, in higher dimension, I, I, I want to mention that uh, most of what I've said works exactly in the same way in higher dimension. Uh, which could be interesting because the previous techniques were about co-dimension two cycles on varieties of any dimension. So the previous techniques do, do not say anything about zero cycles in dimension three or more. Uh, so the, the only the only place where dimension two was really used is, is this one. And, and here we don't. I mean, we just don't know what happens. Uh, and because of this problem, we don't know what happens in higher dimension. And an example of a of an open question simple open question in third dimension is, is this, if you take x, a smooth projective, a rationally connected variety, uh, over c level for t, well, is the chart loop trivial? For such a variety, it's known that it has finite exponents, so trivial is equivalent to being divisible here. And uh, okay, that's, that's something we, we don't know in dimension greater than 2. But you know it in dimension 2? Ah, oh, because it's rational, okay. Yes, it's rational. Geometry genus 0. Well, that's it. Okay. okay, so I'll stop here. Thank you very much. Thank you. So, uh, could we maybe start from Tokyo, Beijing, and then come back to Paris? Okay, so we start from Tokyo. Okay. Uh, In fact, we don't see you very well. There is no light. Ah, maybe, maybe, maybe. Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, thank you. So, uh, uh, so in, in your last term, what, what, are, what are the numerical invariant of, of this, this subset? So, P, for example, P is your uh, bit number, second bit number. So, I. Uh, so I uh, not completely sure. I think uh, I think uh, the geometry genus is three. Uh, I mean, I've, mm -hmm. I've, I've computed this, but I've, I've forgotten. Uh, it, it's Conora dimension one. This I can tell you. Um, uh -huh. I, I can tell you also. It, it, the degeneration in this case is very simple. It degenerates into uh, the union of two surfaces which meet along one curve, and each surface, each of these surfaces, I think has geometry genus one. The curve is an elliptic curve, and they have color dimension one two. Um, okay, I think that's all I can say. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you you just need the, the property of uh, the the modifiable, or are you you ah uh, no. Mm -hmm. uh, you mean to, to to obtain this? Yeah. Uh, yes. So actually, uh, yeah. So thank you for the question. So in in theorem one, I wrote this complex on the top which was equivalent to the divisibility of this group. So it's not, it's not correct in, in general. I was looking at K3 surfaces. But in general, it's almost this. For, for, a, for a variety which is simply connected, it's exactly this, except that on the right, you have to mod out by uh, the same group as here, CH1 of AI orthogonal. Uh, but in, in the situation of K3 surfaces, this group was, was trivial. So yeah, so that's again a property of the special fiber. And so the, the exact property you need to get this example is, is the generation like this, such that this, the generic fiber is simply connected. This is very important. And the second property is that if you take the, the curve here, the intersection curve, uh, say C, yeah. then you should have that the intersection number of C with any divisor in, uh, in either surface is even, always even. 
primary i and n z uh, divisor on a i. So that's what you need to do. <laughs> Thank you. Other follow up question? Yeah. Okay, so thank you very much for, for the talk. Yeah. Okay, so we do we have some questions from Beijing? Okay, so any questions? No? <laughs> uh, there's no questions from Beijing. Okay, so. <laughs> You have a question. Uh, yeah, yeah. You, you said something about I did not uh, register exactly. So about the some passage to the limit for the strict realization uh, of the periodic field. There was some comment that you made. No, oh, here at the end. Yes. No. So here I was saying that uh, so there is a, an example like this over the maximum unramified extension of some periodic field. Yes. Now the surface is defined over some periodic field. Yeah. And. To this yeah. surface over the PID field, you can apply theorem 2. Yes. So you have this situation with the surface over a PID field, and on, on, on this PID field, the cycle cost map is injective, and it's still injective if you go to any unramified extension or maybe any finite extension if you believe the safe conjecture. But if you go to the maximum unramified extension, it's not injective anymore. That's the counterexample here. Ah, and so the point is the cohomology doesn't commute with right, the limit. Because it's the ZL coefficients. Ah, okay. Not finite coefficients. Okay. But yeah, still it's maybe a bit unexpected. Yeah. Other questions? Okay. Well, uh, <coughs> I think that um, at some places you mentioned that uh, you had to use uh, Gabor's L prime uh, alteration theorem. Yes. C could you give uh, a specific uh, example? Because here is not so convincing because you work with QL, so... Uh, yeah. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, you're right, here the young is enough, I'm sorry. No, no, you're right. No, no, it's really used uh, just to prove the theorem of Saito and Sato, the isomorphism there, up oh. there, yeah. Uh, I mean, if you want to prove this, you can do any alteration of degree prime 12, and, and, uh, and reduce in this case to... I mean, you work with finite coefficient then? Yeah, you're right, you're right, I'm sorry. Yeah. The, this theorem is true for finite coefficients, and that's how you prove it. Yes, thank you. Other questions? So, third, let's thank the speaker again. <laughs> and then we say goodbye to to Regine and to... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah. Uh, so ah. it's not, maybe I can... Uh, yes, so we have still <laughs> any questions. No, no, I, I, I'm not, uh, I didn't know. <laughs> yes. Where is it used? So you, there was a question uh, from Tokyo. So you said that you have this uh, mo local monodromy theorem. Mm -hmm. yes. So where does it enter in your... in the... In the uh, so here, yes. I mean, if you want to, to prove that H3 of A bar is pure of weight 3. Yes. So what you do is that, uh, in fact, it's in an exact sequence. So it surjects onto uh, H3. So you have this. Okay, but in fact, this is not the important part. The, the important part is what comes on the left. You have H3 of the model, say, over the maximal unified extension, with support in A bar. And so this uh, local invariant cycle theorem allows you to prove, it's not completely obvious, but it allows you to prove that this is an exact sequence. It's exact here. It's not completely clear. Mm -hmm. uh, but once you know it's an exact sequence, you're done because this has weights at least three. This has weights at most three. So if it's not pure, it must be because of this. And this you can relate to the urbanizing. And Rapoport Sink assumed that you have semi stable. Yes. And here you assume regular model, no? Yes, you're right, but again, we can use alterations to, to prove uh, uh, the, the weight monodromy spectral uh, conjecture. We can use alterations to prove it. 
אה, אוקיי. אוקיי. סטיל, אתה מבין? So, if not, then we say goodbye. <laughs> 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 goodbye. <laughs>